Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Time now for our bi-weekly women's hockey spotlight, and that means we welcome back Erica L. Ayala. Erica, great to have you here again, and some exciting news coming out of uh, the world of women's hockey right now. Yes, yes, indeed. Always a pleasure to be with you both, Gil and Rachel. And we've been talking about it forever, I feel like. And finally, we have PWHL team names. We also have logos. So no longer will the inaugural champion, Rachel, be known as PWHL Minnesota. Well, I guess the champions technically still are PWHL Minnesota, yes. but they will go into their uh, campaign to defend uh, with a new name. Uh, so let's go through. I'll read them alpha in alphabetical order, um, and then we will we'll get into it here. But first, we have Boston. It's going to be the Boston Fleet. Then Minnesota is now the Minnesota Frost. And then we have Montreal, Victoire. <laughs> I'm not French. I do not speak French, so apologies in advance. Uh, we move on to the New York Sirens. Definitely going to circle a convert and underline a conversation about that one. <laughs> the Ottawa Charge and the Toronto Scepters. Uh, so, Rachel, I'm going to come to you first, and we'll take a look at these logos real quick on the screen for those watching on YouTube. But... Thoughts, initial thoughts about about the logos, then the names. Yeah, I think, you know, they're not what was originally leaked out there, which I thought was interesting. Um, I think it's hard to separate the names from the visual of them. Mm -hmm. I think the, all the names themselves, if you had no idea what the visuals were, are pretty good. Like, I think they're all real solid and I, I think they kind of go with the league. They are, are interesting and different than I think any other hockey look before or and in women's sports. Like we haven't seen these names before in many places. So I really like that. Um, it's just like when you get to the looks, there are definitely some that stand out a lot better than others. Um, I, I would say personally, the Montreal Victoire like looks the best. It is stunningly beautiful. And mm. I, I love like the graphic design of it all. Um, I, I like the New York Sirens because that's like now my hometown team. And so I have to like them and I understand <laughs> the <you>. reference. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I try, <laughs> but, um, you know, I'd say I understood that reference, New York sirens, cause I live near an ambulance uh, staging area, but well, I, I think, I think like it's, uh, uh then you kind of go from there and it's kind of hit or miss a little bit. Mm, hit or miss. All right, Gil, you, well, you're you up here. So, you know, I uh, I don't know how much you knew about the logos coming from the CWHL, the NWHL, which then translated to the, the PHF, but just your thoughts here. PWHL uh, has the, these names. Uh, is there one that really caught your eye? Yeah, I mean, I like the logos overall, but to me, the one that I like the best, uh, and, and maybe this will surprise a few people, but uh, I'm partial to the Boston fleet. Ooh. It, it, it has, uh, first of all, I'm partial to green, but second go. of all, yeah, it looks like an anchor or a sideways trident, and it makes it be like Boston. Yes. So, you know, to me, it covers a lot of bases. I like the color. I like the, the logo. And, uh, you know, the name, it, it says something. So uh, I, that it to says me. the Fleet yeah. Center, the old name for TD Garden is yes. what it says. Well, me. Oh, there you go. See, I didn't, I didn't have that. I didn't connect history. that right away, but yeah. There okay. You go. See, there you go. A little history. I like it. You know, what's interesting about the Boston logo is that it reminds me of the fin that we would sometimes see Rachel with the Connecticut mm -hmm. whale. Uh, I doubt that that was intentional. Just if I had to 
if I had to put money on it, I'd say probably not intentional, but I think it's interesting. And it goes to what Gil is saying. The green, I think really stands out with respect to kind of the color scheme here, but we kind of knew that at the, I think the teams for the most part, right. Kept their, their colors that they had from when they were just going by their city um, name. So I think it's interesting. I would say, I'm, I, I really liked the NWHL names. So I don't think that these compete. Uh, now there's going to be a women's soccer team that is taking Let's on. Let's talk about that. We, okay, we don't want to talk about that. All right. This is not a soccer podcast. And we don't talk about it. But uh, Pittsburgh Riveters, I mean, do I like uh, it? I don't know. Am I excited? Maybe a little. But we're not going to talk about it. Okay, we'll move on. We'll move on. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Rachel, I totally get where you're coming from, from with regard to, like, being a New Yorker. I don't live in New York any, any longer, sadly, I, although I can't afford where I live now. So I love that. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I totally get the sirens thing. And honestly, it's not something that I ever would have thought of for a team name. So in that way, I, I, I can lean into it, but also like, I just feel like the mythical, like female energy sirens would have been super cool as well. Um, you know, so I, I think it's interesting. Definitely haven't heard anything, not literally, uh, but haven't seen any, any team names like that before. So I, I kind of think that's cool. Um, I, I agree about Montreal. I think they really nailed it. They nailed the brief. Uh, they understood no. the assignment. It seems quintessential Montreal to me. So I really like it. Toronto is is interesting. I'm not. I I'm okay with the name. I'm not sure that the logo is really really doing it for me. Um. And now I don't I'm like not the a, blue and yellow. I'm not a blue yellow combo person. Blue yellow combo. I could see that. It it definitely goes. They're actually not playing at uh Toronto Metropolitan. I think that's the school name now. Uh, used to be Ryerson. They're not playing there anymore. But that's actually kind of the color scheme of that uh, school, which is interesting. But Gil, there, we, ha we have to do it because we left Ottawa kind of for last year. Oh, I guess we didn't talk about Minnesota. The F is giving me like, um, what was that Batman movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it? Oh my, like Mr. Freeze. Batman Mr. and Robin. Freeze. Yes. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but like, that's where my mind goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Freeze, yeah, I, I just see Arnold Schwarzenegger with like, like the, the, <laughs> those intense, you know, like contacts that he had and everything. That was, that was the time. Was it? Was that the one Gil with with Jim Carrey as well? I am not sure, actually. I don't think so. That, that was, uh, think so. was quite the cast. Um, yeah, quite the cast, but not a great movie, according to yeah, most people. Yeah, you know, well. Can't have everything, right? Can't have it all, right? <laughs> but that's kind of what it's giving me. I'm, I'm okay with that. And then there is Gil. Oh man, it like Ottawa. This this joke that I saw on the interwebs is just too good to pass up. Um, shout out to Julio, who said congratulations to the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Calgary Flames on their newest child. When I saw this, like, I can't unsee it now. I mean, <laughs> are they wrong, Rachel? Are they wrong? No, it's it's <laughs> like, it's very upsetting how correct this opinion is. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of perfect from the, the shape to the, the colors just blending. It's like, oh, we know who your parents are. <laughs> <laughs> and it is about nine months after the league took off, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The, the math, the math works. It adds up. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Are they teasing? Is is uh is Cleveland getting a team at some point? <laughs> so they want their logo uh, back. <laughs> yeah, Cleveland and Calgary are the next two expansion teams. Um, I just thought that was really funny. Uh, I I can't. I don't know. I, it's really hard, Rachel, for me to separate now the the Ottawa logo from that joke. <laughs> It's going to be tough. Maybe it'll look great on a jersey, though, like when we see yeah. the whole uniform together. So yes. I'm going to, like, try and be nice about it until yeah. then. 
I mean, I'm not even, I just think it's a hilarious joke. I don't know if it was meant in a disparaging way. I just think it's absolutely hilarious. So, but yes. I agree with you. I think it goes with all of these, right? Once we see the whole getup, uh, I think it will be interesting. And so we have some news. We, we talked on the last spotlight about, um, it was Toronto and uh, Montreal, actually, who are relocating. Both will be playing in facilities that are shared with AHL teams. But New York uh, is doing what all New York teams do, Rachel, and they're playing in New Jersey. In New Jersey. <laughs> but keeping the New York name. But keeping the New York name, because that's what we do in New York. Um, jokes aside, I mean... I definitely have thoughts about that. I, I share that in all sports arenas. But this is a move, Gil, that we've talked about before. It seemed inevitable that the if there was going to be a team in the New York metropolitan area, that they were going to have to be in New Jersey just for what this league is trying to be about. And quite honestly, getting fans to actually be able to attend the games. You, you want to hold your games where it's most convenient for your fans to go. And uh, they drew best in New Jersey. It makes sense to me. A uh, little tougher for me to get to games now, but that should be my biggest problem. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it is very accessible by public transit. I've taken the path out there many, many times. And yes. it is very easy to get there. So... Yes, much. I, I think it's the right call. Yeah, I, I think agree. It's the right call, also. Although it takes me an hour just to get to the path, but you know, <laughs> it's like, but great for you. But so they will maintain, uh, or or will continue to play um, in an NHL arena. They played, of course, we know um, out at uh, UBS Arena where the Islanders play. Gil, I know you're very familiar with that. But they will be playing at Prudential Center, The Rock. We have seen women's hockey there before. Now the Riveters, they have played certain games there and then they played their most of their games for a time right next door at the practice facility of the New Jersey Devils at Barnabas Health Hockey House. <laughs> but um, we there's going to be a different practice facility. And I think a lot of this had to do with, although Barnabas made a lot of sense because of its proximity to Prudential Center, the demerit and why the Riveters, even at the time of the NWHL and uh, PW, PHF, excuse me, moved and tried relocating for a time is because the the locker rooms and the facilities for a, a team that wants to, to be there throughout the week, um, have games at a, a, a and practices at a normal time that just wasn't conducive to what Barnabas is doing not just because of the Devils, but also because of a lot of the youth programming and other leagues that they have there. So I think this is the right move. Um, and we're seeing that the PWHL is really focused on increasing capacity for um, and, and, and accessibility. And I think we've seen that already pay dividends because we have the names, we have the logos, we have new locations. And Toronto is actually the first team, Rachel, in the PWHL to sell out season tickets. They're going the way of the Las Vegas Aces <laughs> in the WNBA and becoming the first team to sell out their season, season tickets for season two. Now we just have to get Asia Wilson to a uh, <laughs> Toronto Scepters. I know. That's it. Uh, maybe if they put a team in Miami, uh, you know, <laughs> if, <laughs> if the rumors are true, maybe she'll come with a guest. But uh, anyway, that's for another podcast. We'll do a locked on women's basketball for that one. But um, yeah, so we have names. We have logos. We're getting season ticket sellouts. All signs point to this being, uh, you know, good progress for a league that really made huge strides. There are still some things, though, that we want to see. And a good start would be the actual schedule. We don't know yet exactly when the games are going to tip off but we do know where they'll be. We do see that the, the league is already putting out, um, I think they're calling them mock jerseys, uh, or, uh, you know, I think some, it's very, uh, you know, like jerseys, I guess, or something like that, where you can uh, already get your swag. So uh, next up, I guess, on the next uh, spotlight, hopefully we'll be talking about the schedule, when the season is going to tip off, uh, when the, what the playoffs are going to look like and things of that nature. But for now, it seems to be a step in the right direction. 
Yeah, exciting times right now for the PWHL, and great to see that you're on top of it, as you always are, Erica. Uh, Thank you so much, and we'll check back with you in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Thank you.